first howdy. Can you see technology all around me? Well, it's a fact that technology surrounds us everywhere we go. But undoubtedly, it has also made our lives easy in everything that we do. But as every coin has two sides, let's find out the flip side of technology too. Well, here we are and this is School of Thought. We have with us today a group of feisty youngsters, one of the groups who call themselves technophiles, believe that technological advancement is a boon for us, while the other, called the technophobes, says it's a bane. So without taking much of your time, let's start the discussion and start this war of words. So I request the technophiles to open this debate. From the moment we open our eyes with the buzzing of our alarms, to the time we're in bed again at night, scrolling and scrolling our phones for hours. Our lives revolve around technology. Technology is everywhere. Phones, lights, cameras, ACs, washing machines, microwaves. It is everywhere. It is one of the greatest boons bestowed on mankind. But let me tell you, the influence of technology is not only restricted to making our daily lives easier. In fact, they expand to a much higher level. The advancements of technology in the field of health, education, defense, agriculture, transportation have contributed immensely to the progress and betterment of mankind. In fact, the greatest testament to technology's role in our lives was recently provided during the COVID-19 pandemic. Children started studying from their homes. People started working online. Doctors saved thousands of lives using ventilator. All because of technology. In fact, the reason why we're here today having this debate recorded is again, all technology is boom. Technology has become the part and parcel of our lives. It has become the very basis of human existence. If it was not for technology, we would not be here today having this debate. The reason why we're here today having this debate recorded is again, cause of technology. Our lives are incomplete without technology. Each and every sector has technology. You're talking about uh, the role of technology during COVID, but hasn't COVID even made us more dependent on technology, essentially making us lazier? I won't say that COVID has make, made us more dependent on technology. It is. It has, in a way, made us more familiar with technology. And not only us, but people of all age groups, people of all cultures, you know, people in villages have become more familiar with technology. They have started using technology a lot because of the COVID period. And technology has, in a way, uh, united and integrated uh, our whole nation or the whole world. So, and the, uh, talking about the dependence of individuals on technology, I think it is very subjective. It is It depends on us, on how we use technology and how dependent are we on technology. I mean, I truly agree. Like she said, ki, uh, technology is so diverse in itself. And given uh, the global situation where there is so much diversity amongst people, each of us as individuals um, are going to see and use technology in a very different way. So that completely depends on us. And technological advancements, they just occur when science gets a structure. It's really even impossible to imagine life whether in modern or primitive or rural or urban areas without even the word technology. I think we are so familiar with the very term that we don't recognize it anymore. So we need to rewind and we need to see it again. For example, since the prehistorical ages, technology has been there. Um, the stone tools were a technology. So was a comb, a pen, a simple toothbrush, a paintbrush, a simple wall, a brick, a building, to even skyscrapers. All of them have been technology. Uh, technology is like a growling engine of change. It feeds on itself and thus it grows on itself. And it has fueled economic renaissance. I mean, from stones to coins to paper money and to digital transactions today. It has all been technology. Isn't it so easy? how we can operate these huge transactions within a jiffy. And it is so easy um, as each of us as individuals can do it on our own level. 
you said that people have become more familiar with technology right. but don't you think this familiarity has led people to spend more time online which makes them ultimately they get this feeling of loneliness which leads to depression and other mental health issues i think that is a factor of it for sure technological advancements are not at least late but it not again, just teen adults also every age group is facing mental health issues because of technology that is true but technological fa- uh, factors are not the only thing that but it is one of the, the biggest factors yes yeah, cyber bullying is such a like cyber a, bullying mm-hmm. cyber attacks all of it leads to mental health problem yeah and even a, uh, and even a consequence of mental health is cyber bullying because mm-hmm. people uh, who are extremely frustrated go uh, go to these ways Exactly. But as I said, it is very subjective. It is. It depends on how you use technology and how engrossed you are with technology. We see kids who are on their phones or on their laptops 24/7, and and no, there see, are. No, see. Suppose I am using technology, and if I get cyber bullied, how is it my fault? I did not do anything but wrong. But how is it technology's fault then? Technology has many positive aspects also. But so you can't it's just take cyber bullying and then blame technology for it. If there weren't that much advancement in technology, there would there wouldn't have been any cyber bullying. But bullying takes offline also. It takes in school. It takes place in schools also. But cyber. It, bu- okay, you how is it easier bu- to tell the higher authorities when it's like in real life? Are you sure it's easier to tell the sci- uh, the authorities that it's uh, the the bullying which is happening to you? Is it easier to tell the authorities? Yeah, because there are people around us that might notice you getting it's bullied. Really but I you say in online bullying, stuff, you have right? the proof with you. Okay. supporting change so change begins at the end of our comfort zone so why do we hesitate to accept changes the world is changing very very quickly and we need to raise up to the conversations as to what as humans we have the potential to achieve and what we have already achieved i remember my father telling me in the late 80s and early 90s we had the rise of virtual reality the vr headsets were introduced it's basically strapping tv to your face but you can look around so it's basically new things the change what's happening so humans have this historical consistency of staying reluctant to new things which is which is what they have done with the technology so basically humans have feared technology since writing was the latest thing greek philosophers also argued that writing would make our knowledge abstract as if we write things down we just forget how to remember it when the printing press was introduced the upper class also feared that the lower class would turn rebellious and religious because of books newspaper would hurt social fabric and cinema would demoralize society and when the internet arrived we saw the most bizarre headlines i don't mean to say they are bad i just mean to contemplate that these types of arguments are reoccurring over and over again and douglas adams a science fiction writer has brilliantly summarized this thing so what's happening is that everything we are introduced to before the age of 15 years is normal to us isn't it and everything we are introduced to between the ages of 15 to 35 years is new and exciting and we tend to get a career out of that anything we are introduced to be- after the age of 35 years is unfamiliar to us and we tend to stay reluctant our response to smartphones would have been the same if they were introduced before the books okay as you talked about writing i'll uh, just quickly make a point and then you guys can come up and add on to that so writing you said and you quoted a writer very well here and i believe that writing is an art do you believe that we believe that writing is an art okay great so with the introduction of chat gpt do you, don't you think that it's getting affected because now it's not even an art right now i mean people are just typing things up and it is giving you a whole of an article and nobody is thinking about it i mean nobody is making doing any brainstorming any research for that matter and they're giving you the whole article and it's killing the art don't as the writers you quote you won't get any writers to quote later on but you still need to think of what you no, have you to know. write when you it. give a prompt it gives you all the answers it is hindering creativity it is forcing us to limit our thinking yeah. uh, don't you see university students they are getting plagiarism charges they are getting plagiarism for homeworks and tests and they have to sit in front of a committee and they have to say that we didn't do uh, we didn't use chat gpt but they in fact use chat gpt and that and that's true uh, also uh, not only writing um uh, artists also lose their jobs because um other people use um ai tools such as mid journey uh dai etc to produce uh, other writing scripts or for, uh, or um majorly um images etc don't you think that is killing uh, other uh, killing no original one writers to research right. or write anymore we are all become what so do you have to say on that your take 
see, like I've said it, it's again person to person. See, even books have existed for a long time and there have been books on every topic. So people who copy now, who don't use their creativity now, people like those exist, existed earlier also, they must have copied from books. And so yeah, but then when they copied from big books, they had to read it, they had to figure out what they're writing. Right now, you no, can't copy from you know, you're not using your brain here. You just need to write the topic and you'll get the answer. Okay, you don't just have to paste it. Yeah. Okay, so see, if you are referring to a particular book, you are just uh, like restricted to an array of the information. But if you're using the AI tools, you get more information about How the How are things. you saying that using chat? But it also promotes plagiarism, it also promotes laziness. Uh, sum- submission is always online, so yeah. you just copy and paste it. Yeah, you don't yeah. read it, you don't recheck it. But I yeah. believe it is person to person. I never. Uh, How I is it no. typing person to person? See, yes. it's, given a, it's it's very it's like two sides of a coin. For example, someone created the pen. Now someone can use it to do anything. Now you can yes, use it to write. Chai in some action movie, you use it to give someone. It literally depends on person. No, the whole purpose True. of charging exactly. the other, no, that other is website not the is you know to what actually the, the real purpose is that you write your thing and then you can give it to ChatGPT for the correction. For my no, but do do that's not that's not what people do. People do they put a prompt. That is they, then. No, it is not on people, it is also on ChatGPT. And even if it's on the people, when you use ChatGPT, we have the tools which identify ChatGPT. So that can be restricted. Yeah, but but you... you you That's what I said, now they are facing plagiarism charges. Isn't that a thing? Why was nuclear reaction created? Well, it was uh, created to... Good point. To, uh, you know, uh, destroy the world. It was to develop the technology. It was to defense, not to attack. Exactly. The energy was converted to electricity. It was for the benefit for the people. Uh, it's on how you how you use it. We how shape. you're using ChatGPT. So it's about how we shape technology and then technology shapes us. Yeah, because so then AI yeah, is also replacing jobs. What do you have to say about that? AI yeah, is not replacing jobs. It is replacing it jobs is day by day. Yeah. Yes, See, the godfather of AI. Do you know who the godfather of AI is? Jeffrey Hinton. He left Google recently. Did you know why he left Google recently? Because he said that he is worried what uh, AI will do to the future. But there are also jobs that can never be replaced by AI, such as jobs of uh, medical professionals and that of lawyers. Those can they, never they be replaced. They can. They can. They can. They can. They can. They can. You are recently, recently there was a test conducted. Let us speak and then you go. Ahead. Japan yeah. has already started making robots which can replace, replace but doctors. But I don't see the problem. Yes. Yeah. Even if AI is replacing jobs, it is just relieving, relieving the... Okay, where will yes. people yes. get really? income? How will they live? Millions no, of individuals are, are at risk of job displacement. And people they have to find other jobs. But what if those other jobs aren't available if every day AI is taking jobs? Day by day, all of the jobs will be occupied. Let them also make a point, guys. okay. But you're also largely overlooking the fact that because of the IT sector, these technological advancements, so many people have gotten jobs in these sectors. And then it's not just always taking away the jobs, but they are providing more jobs. Exactly. And technology is not all about AI. Like I stated, mm-hmm. like my teammates stated, again, we are so familiarized with the term that, oh, anything with a screen, something black, something with a keyboard or some clicks is technology, which is not technology. See, on employment, like she stated, the IT mm-hmm. sector is the biggest employment source right now in India. Okay. As well as if you really look into the rural areas, women who have literally gotten no education, they are getting employment, something as simple as a sewing machine exactly. is giving them employment and at large levels and they are feeding off of their family from that. Okay, so okay. And not yes. even that, I would like to make a stance that t- we have to learn how to work with AI. We have to learn how to do work integrated with AI. Then there are many jobs coming up. But there are a lot of people who do not know how to work along with that and then they are left jobless. So that's how they will learn things. We always how have to know? keep changing. Pe- you just said that the people above um, 35, if they learn something new, they are very unfamiliar with it. And they don't, right. they don't really um, like adapt it, right? So the people above 35 right now, if they get to like they get a job offer and it is something AI or IT related and they are not familiar Good with point. it, what then? See, they, there must they, be something. jobless, their families have nothing. Okay, there must, be, there must be something that they must have what been doing. What is that something? 
Haan, but that's getting replaced by AI. That's what we're saying. No, I'm not saying only AI. Even automation is affecting is us. Not, I mean, okay, we'll set aside AI. We won't talk about AI. What about the automation factories? What about those laborers who work who do not have access to all this technological stuff you're saying? Who do not have access to IT sectors? Who are doing manual work? You know, uh, automation factories is so common now. So they are also getting their jobs replaced. But they have nothing to do. They cannot uh, feed their families. They cannot put food on the table. What do you have? But to don't do? you think that the people who were involved in the development of these technologies also got jobs? because of the development of the sector see india being a land of such diversity amongst people we have technology in everyone's hand now technology is not being restricted to a smartphone they may have a key phone as well and i think we have literally missed the point of one of the most biggest technological revolutionary revolutionary ideas ever done which was upi and it accelerated during the covid-19 pandemic after that you i literally i literally give you example you go to any part of india let that be um, a market in delhi for example chandni chowk you go there and you suddenly say to a shopkeeper bhaiya i don't have any money on me would you accept digital transactions and he would everyone has that qr code with them may that be um, a shopkeeper uh, someone on the streets or um, even a vegetable vendor But everyone do you know how unsafe that is how easier that has made to hack Exactly. People can easily exactly. hack your account and get all that money in one go. You know, RBI it, has proposed one thing that uh, if you have been hacked yes, in 24 yes. hours, you can complain to RBI or your respective bank, and you they can your uh, money can be refunded. Okay, true. Uh, what about the increased number of frauds that are happening? Okay, uh, I agree with your point that RBI has to write that time limit that you inform in 24 hours. But uh, how many of how many of us know that? we also have to provide uh, awareness to that and sometimes these um like we get hacked and we don't sometimes we don't even know that we got hacked yeah, yeah. and like 24 in uh, like during that 24 hours and when that's over and then we have to know it's ha- we got hacked what about then the so rbi that's a very good point and uh, you initiated that we must spread awareness how are you planning to do that in a country of almost a billion people without technology and it's not like we are not trying we are trying right. our best by running the advertisements of rbi and you could hear it in exactly. tv uh, radios and stuff like that we tend to see these advertisement on a daily basis like we could see the posters on the markets like it's just see, we get that technology is helping us but there are more negative aspects to it and you cannot neglect it we are exactly. saying that you should address the neg- uh, negative issues about it and we need to come up with appropriate solutions to it So India being an agrarian economy, uh, in this country farmers used to yes. suffer for many many years because of the erratic rainfall and the infertility of the soil. But nowadays, with the improved technology, the farmers can use HIV seeds and also uh, meteorological advancements that have increased in the last few decades. Uh, the farmers know when they should uh, exactly uh, sow their crops and uh, when to exactly harvest. So, uh, don't you think that uh, with the help of technology, this problem is being solved? But, But all, 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 all farmers are able to, to afford that. That's why the government is providing subsidies and relief, uh, relief funds to the farmers in the re- most remote areas of the country. Uh, can we also talk about environmental degradation? The accelerating rate of industrial waste, which is ruining our rivers, our soils. Our habitat, in fact, let's talk about mining of cobalt to make cell phone batteries. You know um, how it is happening in vulnerable environmental locations. What do you have to say about that? Isn't it ruining a habitat? You talked about it's talking. Uh, it's also pollution. Just tell me how what happens to the waste which is produced at our homes or any kind of waste. It gets recycled, right? And how does that happen? It is all because of technology. There's a lot of employment in the IT sector, right? And there are people getting employed because of IT and AI sectors. So what about in a few years when they get uh, like these people only uh, because of technological advancement make robots and AI that replace those jobs? It won't be the biggest sector anymore because of AI and because of IT because it will uh, th- those things will replace those people and again unemployment. It's all leading to unemployment. Uh, technology has degraded our quality of life. Like for example, if we even have to travel for one kilometer, we book an Ola or an Uber, but we don't work. Or as an example, we use alarm clocks to wake up, and it's not natural for a, for our body to wake up at five or six like earlier earlier human beings used to. 
The world today is very fast, so you need to get to your work very fast, so you will maybe. So earlier it was natural, no? Hmm. And it's the same. No. It's it's the same. Now it comes to would you walk down from here to Chandigarh just by yourself? I'm, I'm not you talking about so such distance. a long distance. I'm talking about short distances. Even short distances, isn't it your personal choice? Well, it's so it's degrading no, the environment. It's degrading our quality of life. More. It's making us more dependent on technology, and that is the whole point to not be dependent. And uh, isn't that affecting your health? For example, um, you also mentioned a point about VR headsets. Isn't that affecting our health? Because um, VR headsets uh, are putting in blue rays, which are extremely harmful yes. for our and eyes, they are so directly clear. into our eyes. Yes. Exactly. But no one is uh, asking you to use these VR headsets for five to six hours on end. Main point yeah. is, isn't technology affecting our health? No, it if you're talking about health, I think the advantages uh, which technology has caused in the health sector are more than its disadvantages. No, it's no. Mental health is also in the health sector, yeah. Yeah. right? Um, these technological advancements, they've led to deep learning in AI. Are you aware of that? Uh, yes, you know? yes. yes, we do. Yeah, it creates a hyper-realistic video, which, is, which seems genuine, but in fact, they're completely fabricated. Now, yeah. imagine... One day you're scrolling through your Instagram or something, you see a video of yourself doing something you've never done before. What about then? That's that's literally that's literally what's causing the technological advancements are causing that because people are it's leading to that. But it wasn't created for that. It, it all comes. Uh, why? How? Why it was, was it created? But then, then it's being misused. Then it comes down to the responsible utilization as an Why was it created? In your opinion, why was it created then? I'm not saying that. See, AI was not created for uh, wrong purposes. Obviously not. It was created to help individuals. It comes down to the responsible usage as an into as an individual. No one is forcing you uh, to use it for a wrong purpose. But it's used so vastly that now people use it for every. Single and that's purpose. why cyber laws exist. Are they followed though? Yeah, yes. they should be followed. And they are. They should be followed. They are following. 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 They I don't That's know. why government is hiring cyber warriors, you know, from every, from very young age. Just yesterday, I saw a video of Angelina Jolie saying something completely out of character about her children, which was completely fabricated, but it looks so real that anybody would believe it. What but about again, their could... personal life? What about hmm. those celebrities? They have feelings too, you know. But we also have tools to identify whether it was fabricated or not. Exactly. It's not always detectable. People it are is that good. No, it some is people are that good that it's yeah. not detectable. Even if they detect it, yes. detect that the video is fake, how will you tell the people who have already seen the video? Exactly. It has already uh, been shared they, multiple times. They already how think that it's that? real. By creating awareness through technology, that so you will create awareness about every video. You will create awareness about every video. The fake blurs the thin lines between reality and fiction. It makes us question about the authenticity of what we see and hear in the digital world. It is very common. See, everything will have a good and bad point, mm. eventually. Mm. And we agree to that. What yeah. we're trying to say is that technology has advanced so much that people are getting too much engrossed in it and then they're using it for negative purposes. Because Literally anything can be used for a negative and a positive purpose, don't you think so? But, but technology but technology has advancement has been so much that people are now more like... If you the darker side is bigger than the brighter yeah, it side. Has side. Yeah. Uh, now let me talk about dark web. So the, recently there's a video viral on the surface where of two people wearing masks and on life, life killing someone. Yeah, so and how? Then, and then children more often go on that dark web and see all those videos, which ultimately leads to that serial killer mindset. Okay, now my point. Yeah, do you think in the past uh, when they were hanged in front of every uh, villager of the village or every people of the town, what do you have to say? Over? Children were there, their parents were hanged in front of them. What do you have to say? Over? How is that related to technology? Exactly. Because now you, he's putting a point that the ch you are putting a point that children are going to dark web. No, see, we are, we never said that they should get hanged in front of the children. This and what about murders and all that? People yes. are doing murders. Internet for protocol. Okay. Let's talk. Yeah. Hmm. People are doing mur murders just for the sake of content on the dark web. You so they get paid okay. and whatnot. Okay. And then Kings people used to are kill people for their sa own first. satisfaction. Okay, no, 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 but that's a diversion again. That 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 you're not supporting yeah. technology. Yeah. First, uh -huh. And who are you, who are you talking about children? We have the inter protocol on our networks which restrict us to go it's to the dark web. It's, it's, it's not, not a strong advancing technology. For a child to access the dark web, the child has to get a really, really long 
lot of knowledge which is impossible no. and takes it it's just for it's no, 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 it's very easy see okay one at a time very yeah. easy very you guys easy. have done it you guys have Yes. Yeah, I've seen people do it. Yeah, I've seen. We've seen, seen people, people do, do it. it. I bet you have also. No, yeah. And that's not possible. Yeah, that's not okay, possible. In our generation, it's not possible. You had a point. I tell me, yeah. I had a point yeah. that we talked about AI. We talked yeah. about dark web. Now let's move on to the quantum computers. Do you even know what are the quantum computers? They are the new technology arriving. The quantum computers. are actually able to solve everything they are the most enhanced computers making including the micro exactly. the micro is making chips. people more dependent mm-hmm. no it's not making no. people dependent see there was a mathematical calculation which could be solved by the computer in like 56 years but it's now solved by the quantum computer in 54 seconds so it's like helping us it's not making us dependent solving those things by ourselves using our own Do you think it's Brain. even possible for a human to solve such a big calculations in his lifetime even? Yeah. You know, a computer takes fifty six years. Can you imagine? You know that the moon exists today, right? You know that the sun is not revolving around the earth, but instead the earth around the sun. These are very, very, very complex calculations. But these are all done by humans only. Yeah. yeah. But that's why they take no. They make a human human now. Chopper. These okay, are. they these were all done because those people back then did not have the technology mm-hmm. to do it, so they did, they did it not themselves. have quantum computers. Exactly. No. They did it themselves. So, so there was now nowadays our generation people are so dependent on this technology that we do not. um what do you say create that mindset only to conclude to conclude by technological advancement obviously had a very big positive impact on the whole world we should not yeah. overlook the darker side of it exactly. it's imperative that we find a balance between advancing technology and addressing these significant issues for the betterment of our society as a whole it leads to us being assured in social isolation it infringes upon our privacy exacerbates in the environmental degradation and presents us with a um, unsettling reality of deep fakes while i completely agree that technology brings a lot of ad- advantages in our lives we cannot just neglect the negative aspects of it job displacement privacy concerns environmental problems social isolation a- and many other problems are there and we need to address these issues <coughs> it is imperative that we all come and find a common solution technology can be misused and it can threaten the very foundation of a free and democratic society somewhere down the road technology a technological advancement will become a threat to humanity people experience various mental health issues like uh, for example people experience people frequently experience fomo have you heard of fomo fear of missing out they they can't live without scrolling through so- so social media for even a day right okay okay and no, not only really, um, we d- we do not need technology to harm our health we need it to um help our healthcare societies so uh, I, I fine like right now you guys conclude with a saying yes. that uh, technology is a useful servant but a harmful master so as long as it's in our hands and we're using it for the benefit of uh, the society it is good and uh, see everything has both sides everything has two sides if we see technology so you talked about job displacements but we also talked about how the it sector is creating more jobs you talked about social isolation but i believe that technology has uh, resulted in uh, making um, people get closer during the covid time through video calls and everything so uh, like i said everything has two sides and it is on us how we are using it okay so and that's about how Mm-hmm. It's about how technology we shape technology and mm. the technology shapes us. And I would like to conclude by saying that it we wouldn't have been able to get out of the COVID nineteen pandemic if it wasn't for the technology guys. Exactly, technological advancements have not been a clean slate. That's completely for sure. As we went on through the debate, we realized how harmful it is. But it has a very brighter side, which is way brighter than the darker side, and. I would like to conclude by stating one basic universal principle we learn from our mistakes of the past and then we build on the present that's a place where we lead the future and that in itself is the very essence of technological advancements
Right, I agree. So, like, basically, for the implementation of technology in various aspects of our life, of our society, it can be both helpful and harmful. But for the betterment of our people, for uh, our like for humanity as a whole, it's just best to stick to the positive usage of it. We should uh, not go ahead and uh, commit uh, wrong acts uh, with the technology and AI tools. So it's best if you use it for your uh, betterment, constructive I mean, purposes. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, to conclude, uh, I would say that technology, boon or vain, is very confidential. Also, <laughs> World, Bank, World Bank even stated that due to technological advancement, the most of the economic growth was substantial. Okay. So these were the final comments. Uh, well, that was very prolific discussion and both the groups made some very good points. So to conclude it all, I'll say that in a way technological advancement is both fruitful for us as well as it has its repercussions. And therefore, how you use this technology shall determine whether it will prove to be an absolute boon or a real bay. So on that note, this is Shivani signing off for now, but we will be back with yet another topic and young energy. Till then, stay tuned. Namaskar.